Teddy has some separation anxiety. So one of the things we're working on is being okay in a crate. Um, we do something called crate games, but sometimes you have dogs that are so upset about the anxiety, you can't even get them to go into the crate all the way to turn around to start crate games. So one of the things we found is having a crate that's large enough that the dog can get all the way in and turn around without feeling trapped. Another big thing that I found that helps Teddy is having the second door open. So what I start with for a dog that has really bad separation anxiety is actually just pitching in the high value treat and letting them figure out how to get. It. So right now he thinks that he can get it for free if he goes over there. So hopefully he'll choose to go inside and get it. Nice, good job, Teddy. Now he wouldn't do this last week. Last week, Teddy um, would stretch his legs in his front legs and not even um, turn around. He would just back up. <laughs> so we've already made huge strides. Sit. Good. So crate games really begins when you can have the dog go in the crate, turn around, sit, and get the door shut. So I'm gonna experiment with shutting the door. We still have the side door open, so if he feels really nervous, he can leave. Good job, buddy. Good. So now I'm gonna latch it, just the top. I really don't care about the bottom. We're just practicing, hearing the sounds of the crate. Good. I don't even know if Teddy realizes that side door is open, but if needed, he can use it. So then we start backing away a little bit. Oh, he's just noticed that it's open, which is fine. We start backing away a little bit and then I'd come over and I'd open the door again. Let's see if he makes a choice to go in there so that we can resume what we were doing. Teddy, don't shut the door on yourself, buddy. Sit. Wow, what a good boy. So giving the dogs the power of choice can be huge in having them progress. Now, obviously, progression would then be um, duration. How long will you stay in here? I don't want any stress signals, and I don't really have any stress signals right now. Uh, he's looking for food, which is great. Uh, then I want to go out of sight and get further and further away. This is Halo. She is a six-month-old mini Labradoodle, and we are working on basically an in-the-middle-of-the-road crate game problem, which is a dog who can now settle in a crate, who can sleep in a crate. Good! but who wasn't going in the crate voluntarily. Her owners were having to put her in the crate, which was increasing anxiety upon their leaving. She would cry for about five minutes and then settle down. So working on crate games at home helped them get through the crying in the crate, helped them get through the problem at night, but we're still left with this problem of a dog who doesn't go in unless forced. So my job with Halo today is making sure she goes in without any force. So as you saw, we were shaping it, which means I wait for her to do it, and then I'm trying to match a new cue for it. So I'm gonna let her know we're still working right now. We've done it lots of times. Hello. Hi. And I'm gonna put the food up here. I'm gonna wait for her to offer the behavior. Good kennel. You notice how patient I was with her. I'm not throwing the food in. That was a step we did a while ago, but now we're past that. Free. Now, there's a lot of distractions outside, but I want her to be able to do this with distractions. So I do encourage people, take your crate with you. Practice this at the park. Practice this at someone else's house. Um, this is not Halo's house, so she's doing it here outside. That means when she goes home, it's gonna be really easy for her to do inside. Halo. Hey, did you know we're still working? Kennel, good. So now I'm gonna to start to say the word right when she's entering that, and hopefully we'll start to get this on full verbal cue. Free. I always tell people you know you're doing your job when they don't wanna get out. Halo, ready? Halo, kennel. Good, now that's really cool. That is the first time ever Halo has gone into a crate with being told the cue first without a treat being tossed in the back or without um, a significant you know, push or being physically put in. So I'm giving her what we call a jackpot 
of a lot of treats in a row for a job well done. The last part of Crate Games would be a dog that's proficient with a send. How far can you send the dog? Can you send the dog from a different room in your house? would be a great application. Someone's knocked on your door and you'd like your dog to go to their crate. You can use this for mat work or lying on a bed as well, um, but I just want to show it with the crate. So this is this last piece. My dog will go in voluntarily. My dog can be in there for long periods. My dog doesn't cry. There's no anxiety. Now can I get a great distance on a send and a dog that really drives for the crate. So I'm going to show you with Lex. Hi. Ready? Let's go kennel! Now he really knows the criteria, right? He goes right in there and he lies down and he will not come out until I say the magic word. So let me show you our magic word here. Ready? Lex? Cats? Dogs? Release! Good boy! He's so good.